Hello everyone, this is Justin with like from StellarMate. And in this video, we'll be talking about Ecos Live. So Ecos Live is the new service provided to our StellarMate customers, but also anyone who uses Ecos can use the service. So Ecos Live is an online real-time web application that communicates with Ecos to perform all matters of controlling the observatory and running the whole astrophotography stack from capture, alignment, guiding, focusing, etc. And so currently we provide two tiers for Ecos Live. We have the free tier and the paid pro tier. So both tiers provide similar functionality in terms of controlling Ecos remotely through the web. So you just need an internet connection and you would be able to control Ecos from anywhere. The differences is because there is a lot of images transferred back and forth, so we have some bandwidth limitations. So the free tier has some bandwidth limitations to it. And also the free tier cannot use live video because this is also another bandwidth issue we're dealing with right here. And finally, um, the pro tier offers a cloud storage solution for our customers, which will enable them to upload their images as lossless formats to the cloud where they're saved and then they can view the images, tag them, search them, and uh, never lose them again because they're always in the cloud. Uh, the, actually, the final, final part is really the Power Alignment Assistant tool. So uh, currently in the beta program, the, this tool is available to both tiers, but in the future, it's only going to be exclusive tier uh, I mean, exclusive feature for the pro tier. Okay, so as soon as you sign up, you'll be directed to the StellarMate Live website, live.stellarmate.com, where you can log in um, with your username and password that you use to sign up. Here, we have a simple interface. Here you see what I will be referring to as the burger menu, these three horizontal bars. And currently it's not accessible because we are logged off. Here you see the red uh, computer-like icon, and this is indicates ECOS status, whether ECOS is online or offline. And so ECOS currently now is offline, and we're logged out anyway, so we don't know. The cloud icon right here indicates whether we're connected to the cloud, and obviously since we're logged out, we're not connected. So without further ado, let's go ahead and log in. So as soon as we're logged in, we can see that the cloud icon turned green. So we are now connected to the cloud. Here we have four tabs. We have the Home tab, Alignment, Polar, which is for the Polar Alignment Assistant tool, and View, and this is where we view our cloud images. In the Home tab, we have the few sections. We have Preview section, where we can see our images. We have Capture, where we control our capture process, including sequences. We have the mount section right here, focus and guide controls. As you can see, these are pretty simplified controls. They're meant for mobile use, like so you can use them on your, your mobile phones and on, on your tablets. But to be able to use this, we need Ecos to be connected to the cloud. So in Ecos, we go and click on the same cloud icon right here with the username and we put a password and we click connect to the to connect to the cloud. And right now we can start the profile either here in Ecos, but in most cases we'll be using this remotely. So just go to the burger menu, click profile, and from here you can select which profile you want to run. Let me select my observatory and I'll just click start. And there we go, we started. One of the first things I'd like to do here is to change the theme. So this is the light theme and I'd like to go and change it to dark theme. So let's go here, settings, and let's go to dark theme. Here you can set some of the settings like high bandwidth. So if you have a fast, reliable internet connection just keep it at high bandwidth while you'll be getting high resolution images. But if you have like um, 
a slow connection or something that's not as reliable, you can turn it off and it will switch to low bandwidth mode where the image quality is reduced to make you, you use it more interactively. Here you can also enable or disable notifications and also sounds where you can just hear the sounds of events like whether the mouth is barking or whether the capture process is uh, successful or whether guiding is, has some problems, etc., etc. So now we can see that our mount is parked. So let's unpark the mount and go to some object. So now we can see here the transient message that mount is unparked. Now let's go to some object. Let me select from the category of objects. I'll select DSO, Deep Sky Object. Let me select the target in here. You can search or, you know, browse through the targets. So let me go to the Veil Nebula, and I will just press Go To. And right now, our mount is flowing to the Veil Nebula. And here, all these controls, you can collapse and expand them as necessary. So this would be quite useful when you're using a mobile phone, for example, and you don't want your UI to be cluttered. So now the mount arrived at our target location. So we can run, for example, now the focus modulo, or we can do a capture immediately. It depends on what you want to do. Let me go and demonstrate the alignment modulo. So it's a pretty simplified version of the alignment modulo right here, where we select the type of action we want to do, which telescope to use, and what kind of solver we want to use. So it's using the settings already I have here by default. So I'll just give them and click Start. And now it's performing the alignment solution. And if you're far away from um, StellarMate or from uh, the computer that's running your observatory, then this gets pretty handy. And here you can see in the preview that the images don't take very long. They're compressed and sent to the cloud uh, in a compressed format, so they arrive pretty fast. So now let's just wait until the solution is achieved and we have uh, the target within 30 arc seconds. All right, so now the alignment solution is successful. For the third section, portal alignment, I'm not going to cover this. This is probably going to come in a separate video to talk about how to use this modulo in uh, Eclipse Live. But it's very similar in how we use it already in the alignment modulo. The final section view here is to view our cloud images. But I will cover this last. Let's go and capture some images right now. So now if we go home, and as you can see, there's still a few bugs to iron out. Now if we go to Home, we have here the controls for the capture. So you can select the pinning, the filter, exposure time, etc. Let me take a preview right now with these settings. I'll just switch here so you can see the same thing going on here. And there we go. We have the image. If you can click on it, it will expand. If you want to add sequences here, you can also add a sequence. So for example, click on the sequence. And let's say, for example, let's add veil and count to be 10. And when you press this and see, it's immediately added to the sequence. Conversely, you can also do the same thing from here. Let's say we add luminance, two counts, and we press add. 
So it immediately gets added to the cloud version as well. As soon as you press start, it will start the sequence and then any images from the sequence are uploaded to the cloud. So now let's go to the cloud viewer, which is one of the really interesting features of Ecos Live. So the cloud viewer supports a rich metadata that comes with the images. These are some images I took actually yesterday. And the interface is pretty straightforward here. You select how many images you want to see in one go. So um, it's by default 20 and increase it as you like. It might be slower if you make it like 100. So 20 is a good uh, number. Um, here you want to select when these images are taken, whether they're taken the last hour, last day, last week, or taken at all times. So this is like a quick filter to display images. So if I do last hour, I didn't upload anything, but if I do last day or last week, actually, I will have these images because it's been actually more than a day since I took them. And here we select, we want to sort by what field, so by size, by frame, for example. And then here, if you want to select ascending or descending. So these are the the usual, usual controls that you have in any, any, any image browser. Below here, you can click here to download the FITS image directly to your hard drive, or click on the share button, and then you can share them to your favorite social website or email. And you will share the, the JPEG version, you will not share the FITS version. Click here, of course, to delete one image. Or if you want to delete all the images that are displayed right now, you can browse through here and you will see here metadata information regarding the size, the pinning, the temperature, and the name of the file itself. The Ecoslide version also provides a really advanced tool to uh, search and narrow your images. Oh, well, before that, let me talk about one final feature here, which is the tagging system. So tagging system is a way to uniquely identify one of your images. So let's say you want to designate this as primary. So you just type the tag. And then that's it. It is tagged as primary. If you want to tag it as something else, let's take, for example, master here. And it is tagged as master. If you go to the search functionality, this is actually a previous search functionality I added before. But here you can see which metadata field you want to have. So let's say file. Then which condition you want to do, equal, not equal, larger, smaller than, etc. For example, you can have like contains. And then you can search for a, for a specific file and you add this condition. Then check or click apply. Then close it and then you will only have the conditions that you want to have. Here are some previous tags I added, so let me delete them. You can also search, like say, I want everything that's, um, let's see, or, or by frame, for example. So let's search. By frame. So all bias frames. And here we see that we have none. All dark frames. And we have none as well. Looks like I didn't take any. Uh, <laughs> any frames of that type. We can select the camera also, the air mass, 
the date if you select the date you can see like larger than a specific time or smaller and here we select the date and time and it will filter all the images accordingly thanks for watching and stay tuned for more exciting developments on ecos live clear skies